Research in this laboratory is focused on the effect of magnetic fields on uh, fluids. And in particular, we're interested in the effects of time-dependent magnetic fields, not just a simple static magnetic field, but a magnetic field that has three orthogonal or mutually perpendicular components, and each one of these components oscillates so that the magnetic field goes back and forth. The fluids are simple liquids to which we've added a small amount of magnetic particles. Think of very, very, very small magnetic confetti. In fact, when we apply these magnetic fields uh, in some appropriate way to these fluids, we can stimulate very vigorous uh, flow, actually can create fluid flow lattices. Now, fluid flow is an important aspect of technology. It's, uh, it's necessary in giant reactors. It's necessary in, in winemaking. It's uh, used in nuclear reactors. It's used to cool the engine in your car. There are many applications where uh, having fluids flow vigorously is an important uh, part of solving some sort of problem. Now, typically, making fluid flow is done with some sort of pump that uses an impeller, some kind of mechanical uh, force on the, on the fluid, and really just shoving it around in some controlled way. What's remarkable about this technology is we're not making any kind of contact with the fluid at all. Rather, the magnetic fields are, are, are indirectly creating fluid flow. And in fact, the fluid flow patterns that we create are very surprising, have very unique symmetri symmetries. It's a type of um, emergent behavior uh, that's similar to the emergent behavior that are, uh, behaviors that occur in nature, such as the murmurations of flocks of starlings or other such processes. Here in this uh, roughly one inch square glass cuvette, we have the uh, magnetic platelets that uh, we mentioned earlier. And as you can see, using this permanent magnet, they are uh, rather responsive. So you can see how they shift around inside the cell as we move the magnet. So now we'll be adding some uh, solvent to these uh, platelets. And in this case today, we're just using some isopropanol. It's a good benign solvent. Uh, any low viscosity solvent would work. Aqueous uh, solutions, water, and other alcohols. So um, typically we just add enough that will bring the uh, volume fraction of platelets up to a couple percent. So now with our uh, prepared suspension, we'll just go ahead and place it in the center of the triaxial uh, Helmholtz magnet assembly and then we can see what kind of flow patterns we can get. We've shown you how, how vigorously fluids can uh, flow when stimulated by this triaxial magnetic field. Um, this is already shown to have uh, enormous applications for heat and mass transfer. We've actually been able to create a thermal valve where we can, where we can control the transfer of heat in a fluid by a factor of 100. We can essentially reduce uh, heat transfer to almost nothing, and we can make heat transfer within the fluid extremely large. So, for example, we could cool some kind of micro device, some sort of uh, high power chip. We could allow, allow it to heat up very quickly by blocking heat transfer, let it come to equilibrium, and then transfer the heat away as necessary in order to maintain a constant temperature.